Greetings and salutations. <laughs> Thanks for joining me for another video. In today's Tesla quick tip, we're gonna be doing something a little different. With the incredible growth of Tesla and with so many new owners that just took delivery, are about to, or are still waiting, I thought it was only appropriate to start a new how-to series that helps them with the transition to electric vehicles. And in my case, the Tesla Model Y. Now this series is for complete beginners. So if you're a longtime Tesla owner, you might wanna skip this video. And so no hard feelings, I completely understand. And we'll have new travel videos coming out shortly. But there might be a few hidden gems you didn't know. And if you do stick around, I'd love for you to help me out and comment below with anything I might've missed. These videos are gonna be short, sweet, and straight to the point. In our first video, we're gonna be taking a look at how to use autopilot. This is one of the most popular features new owners wanna try. So let's show you how it works, its best features, and what it's not capable of currently. First, let's discuss the difference between autopilot FSD, or full self-driving, and FSD beta. Autopilot, which comes standard on all new Teslas and is what I currently have, has advanced safety and convenience features that are designed to assist you with the most burdensome parts of driving. Autopilot introduces new features and improves existing functionality to make your Tesla safer and more capable over time through software updates. Autopilot, along with its eight cameras, which make up Tesla Vision, enables your car to steer, accelerate, and brake automatically within its lane. Current Autopilot features require active driver supervision and do not make the vehicle autonomous. Next, we have FSD, or full self-driving. And just a note, it shouldn't really be called that since it's not actually full self-driving and is a bit deceptive by Tesla. But let's move on. FSD actively guides your car from a highway on-ramp to off-ramp, including suggesting lane changes, navigating interchanges, automatically engaging the turn signal, and taking the correct exit. FSD also includes features like auto park, summon, which will remotely drive your car to you in parking lots, traffic and stop sign control, and eventually auto steer on city streets but don't hold your breath for that feature as it's been promised for years. Tesla points out this is not fully autonomous, so driver attention and input is still required. This option costs $199 a month as a month-to-month -month subscription or $10,000 when purchasing your car. It's worth noting that the $10,000 option stays with the car and not the owner. So if you sell it, you'll need to purchase it all over again on a new Tesla. That's why this subscription might make more sense, especially if you only plan to use it during certain times of the year, like during the summer when taking long road trips. I currently don't feel it's worth the cost unless you're going to do the 199 a month plan when you really need to use the feature, like on long road trips or if you have a long commute to work each day on an interstate highway and would prefer the car do most of the work. Finally, FSD Beta provides early access to new features that Tesla is still working on, such as auto steer on city streets, which enables drivers to navigate around complex urban environments without moving the steering wheel with their own hands. This is the closest we currently have to actual fully autonomous driving. This beta program can be requested from your car's screen if you own a newer Tesla with the correct hardware, as well as are a subscriber of FSD. It's up to Tesla to allow you into the beta program, and they will remove you if you're discovered to not be following the strict rules surrounding the program. They monitor driver's attention using the cabin camera located on the rear view mirror. Currently, the beta program is only being tested by a few thousand drivers, although Tesla hopes to expand the program soon. All right, let's head outside and show you how autopilot, which comes standard with every new Tesla, works. All right, so now that we're in the car, we're going to head to the autopilot settings page just to take a look at that. Go here, go down to autopilot, and you can see that I have auto steer, uh, which is beta turned on. I have full self-driving visualization preview. Uh, that's turned on, although that is not actually full self-driving. I do not have FSD on my car. I just have the stock autopilot that comes with every Tesla. Um, as you go down here, I have a uh, speed limit. Uh, so when I set my speed, you wanna make sure that you can either set it to whatever the current uh, speed limit is, or you can set it to a specific speed limit. So I have it at 2% over the current speed limit. 
you go down a little farther and here we have automatic blind spot camera. So this is the uh, cameras that are on each side of the car. So when you go to turn on the blinker like this, you'll see I have the right camera. And if I turn on the left blinker, you have the left camera. And there's also a blind spot collision warning chime. If you have that turned on, that will make sure that uh, it'll give you a, you know, a audible alert when uh, there's a car next to you. If you, you start merging and there's a car there, it will tell you. Uh, speed limit warning, if you're going too fast, it will display up here. And then here we have the speed limit warning. Uh, it's relative to five miles over. And then as you go down, you have forward collision warning that will uh, just alert you if you're about to run into something in front of you. If you're a little too close, it'll just give you a loud beeping noise. And then same with lane departure avoidance. That just makes sure as you're driving or on autopilot that uh, it'll assist you and make sure that it keeps everything centered. You could change that to warning or turn it off, but I like to keep it on to just assist me and it'll kind of guide me back to the middle of the lane. And then as you go down here, you have automatic emergency braking for autopilot, which I have turned on. Same with obstacle aware acceleration. It'll accelerate out of the way if it detects some type of threat coming near it. And then as well as traffic aware cruise control chime. All right, so that's about it for the autopilot settings. Let's take it out on the road and see how it works. All right, so when is autopilot available? Well, when it's not available is on like side streets like this where there's no definitive lane marking in the middle. Uh, there has to be a lane marking for you to use autopilot. If you try to use it without, watch what happens. See, auto steer temporarily unavailable. So you cannot use it when you're on a side street. There has to be a lane marking for you to use. All right, so now that we're back onto a regular two lane road that has a clearly defined lane marker in the middle, now we can turn on autopilot. And as you can see, it's 30 miles an hour right here. So we will turn it on. I'm gonna let go of everything. You can see it says, please keep your hands on the wheel and stay attentive. Now, as we're going down this road, it's 30 miles an hour, as you can see right here. I have it at 31. I'm going to speed it up and go 35. I'm gonna to try to go faster and to uh, increase the speed, all I'm gonna do is just touch this little dial here and just push it up. And you can see it's restricted to 35 miles an hour. Anytime you're on a two lane road or highway, it's only gonna allow you to go five miles an hour over the speed limit. And so it's max right now is 35 miles an hour. And we're just gonna keep going right here. It says it wants me to apply light touch to it just to let it know that I'm there. Regular autopilot does not recognize stop signs or stoplights, so I need to stop right here. Now I'm gonna take it right here. As you can see, there's the camera on the right side because I have the right blinker on. All right, I'm gonna turn autopilot back on right now. Again, I have a marking in the middle, so I'm allowed to do that. All right, and I'm gonna increase it to 35 miles an hour, which is the max. And again, autopilot's taken over, uh, but my hands are right here, ready to take control if needed at any point. All right, to disengage autopilot, you can either press the brake or you can just uh, press up on the stock and it automatically turns off. So either press the brake or just press up on the stock. All right, so I'm just getting onto the highway here. First things first, if you wanna just turn on regular cruise control, all you have to do is just go up here to the stock, just press it down once, and then you can let off the brake. You still have to steer. All right, so now let's disengage cruise control. To do that, you can just either again press the brake or up on the stock. I'll press up on the stock. You can see it turned off. I'll take back over with everything. And then say now I wanna turn on autopilot. So I get up to the speed that I wanna to get to or close to it. And then I just hit the stock twice downwards. That's it. Now autopilot is active. Nothing left for me to do. Just chill and relax. Enjoy the ride. Now you will have to give occasional input as it'll pop up on the screen telling you uh, that you need to just you know touch the wheel a little bit just to let the car know that you're paying attention. All right, so let's say you want to change lanes. 
Then you just put on your blinker. You'll see your uh, blind spot right there. And then you just go over. All right, so let's say you want to increase your speed. We're currently going 65, but it just turned to 70 miles an hour. All you do is take this little scroll wheel here and just scroll it up. And you can set it to whatever you want, all the way up to, I believe, 90 miles an hour if you're on like an interstate. So as you can see, it's just going 70 right at the speed limit right now. And pretty soon it'll pop up here with asking me to make sure that I'm uh, paying attention and just giving a little input to the steering wheel. There it goes. Apply slight turning force to the steering wheel. And then it starts giving uh, a little blue symbol up here just to let you know. And if you don't touch it, it'll give you an audible alert, which should come up here in a second. Yep, there you go. So I give it a little force and still back on autopilot, no problem. All right, so this truck's going a little slow in front of me. So if I wanna go around him, I'm just gonna put the left blinker on. I'm gonna steer it myself because I don't have full self-driving. And then hit that down again to get autopilot back on. All right, just passed the truck. Put the blinker back on. Check your blind spot and turn autopilot back on. It's as simple as that. And this is great for long trips. All right, and so with autopilot turned on, again, you can see this is your current miles per hour. This is the max you have it set at, which you can again change with this. And so if you had it, let's say you set it to like 85, but the traffic in front of you is only going 70, the car will automatically slow down and adjust the traffic all the way down to a complete stop into bumper to bumper traffic. So you don't have to worry about that. Again, really you only have to take over if there's like an incident in front of you, something that's kind of awkward that the car won't recognize, or if you need to change lanes or come to a stop sign or a stoplight. So I found too on road trips, if you just kind of keep your knee right here and your hand with a little bit of weight on it, that's really all you need to do and that'll just keep it going for hours at a time. Now there is a cabin camera right up here, but while it's turned on, it's not quite fully functional in the sense that it has eye tracking, but it doesn't fully allow you to not give input to the steering wheel, which is kind of annoying right now, but hopefully over time here shortly, they end up changing that so that just through the eye tracking, it'll be able to make sure that you're paying attention and you won't need to give it input like this because that part is kind of annoying. But as the technology gets better and software updates are sent to the car, you won't have to do that anymore. All right, so now let's try autopilot in more of a city type environment where there'll be stop and go traffic. We're currently going 44 in a 45. And so I'll turn on autopilot. And you can see there's some traffic slowing down up front. And again, it, as you can see, just starts slowing down. And again, you can do this all the way down to a complete stop. So if you're in bumper to bumper traffic and you just wanna stay in your lane, autopilot is fantastic for that in rush hour traffic. And it, again, increases speed on its own. Nothing for me to touch. Now, if we were going upwards of 45 miles an hour. I could set this to go all the way to 50. So I'll do that right now, even though we're only going 15 miles an hour. I've set it to the max, which is 50 miles an hour, five miles over the speed limit, again, because we're on a two lane road here. Either two lane roads or two lane highways, you can only set it to go five miles an hour over the speed limit. And again, there has to be a clear lane marking in the middle. But otherwise, yeah, as you can see, all the way down to a complete stop and then takes off on its own. So again, for rush hour traffic, bumper to bumper, you know, this is, uh, this is pretty awesome. All right, and so just so you know, when you have autopilot turned on, you have a little blue steering wheel right here, and that'll always remain on when autopilot's on. If I hit the brake right now or push this up, it turns off, and then I have to take full control. All right, let's turn it back on. And then as you see, we're pulling up to a light here. Now the car will automatically slow down because there's traffic in front of me. 
And if there wasn't though, and it was just going straight through, then you'd wanna make sure that you do brake because standard autopilot will not stop for traffic lights or stop signs. For that, you have to have uh, FSD or full self-driving, or you have to have full self-driving beta. All right, so that about wraps up today's video. If you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't already. And I will see you in the next travel quick tip or review video. Thanks for watching.